it's here. It, it, it has arrived. I know. It's, it's insane. Um, welcome to Caldame, everyone. And I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Caldame and also show you official spoilers. There's an early spoiler uh, season going on, the 15th through the 17th of this month. And then later on, next month, they're going to finish up spoilers uh, with the bulk of them. But this is all the early stuff. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Caldime, show you all the product stuff, show you a bunch of spoilers, speculation pieces, just everything in this video. Different from a normal spoiler video you would find here on Bad Boy Gaming. I wanted to spice things up and make it more interesting for you guys. So enjoy. That all being said, Caldime, let's get up into it. Made its first appearance in the plane, um, uh, in this plane card from Plane Chase back in 2009, which is pretty legit. That's the art and the card you see right there for it. Very first time ever mentioned. And then we have um, what actually is like Caldheim. Well, it's a Norwegian language. And in Norwegian language, I'm sorry, in Norwegian, in Norwegian language, cold means cold. And heim means home. So this set breaks down to, or is literally named, cold home. I think I'm going to start calling it cold home. I don't think we need to call it Caldheim anymore. All right. Moving along, let's meet our Planeswalker friends. We know all four of them now who are going to be in here. Here is Tavar. Tavar's a confident, young, charismatic wood elf. He's a younger brother of King Harold, Harald, and he united the two groups of elves. His purpose, what you're going to see on his Planeswalker cards, elf tribal support. I know, I know, I know everybody's favorite. I'd say elves are probably like, they got to be top five, if not top two most played tribal decks that make for a good video too but uh seeing elf tribal stuff coming back in standard is pretty cool the last time i think we saw competitive elves in standard if i'm not mistaken it could have been maybe a couple years ago i'm trying to remember when they were really really strong um but yeah i mean like right now in historic they're great you know and other formats as well but in standard it's been some time so elf tribal support is back on the map with uh with this new Tavar, Planeswalker, pretty legit. First time he's ever made an appearance. This sweetheart who graced the artwork. Um, this is Kaya, main Planeswalker of the set, and she appears in Caldheim Draft Booster boxes and the Caldheim Bundle. Not many people... Okay, this is this was going on all around the internet. I saw many instances. We're going we're gonna to talk about this, okay? This is a little controversial, but uh, we're going to talk about it. Um, people... One, they didn't realize who the artwork was. They didn't know that was even Kaya. But this was the very first piece of art we saw for this Viking, this Norwegian set of cards, right? And when people initially saw this, they were not happy. They were upset. And uh, they said this is a very, very poor depiction of a Viking. And uh, their reason being was, number one, dark-skinned doesn't represent Vikings whatsoever. And number two was, what's all this purple shiny stuff going on? What's with the hair? This is not Viking. The, like Even the attire, everything about it, nothing screamed Viking. Everyone, like not everyone, but a lot of people were upset. I'd say a, 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 small, a small majority, uh, a, a, a minority, I should say, of the magic community was upset with this art. Um, no. There's nothing to be mad about. Do you guys realize you're playing Magic the Gathering? Does anyone realize this? Do, do, you, do you know that you're playing Magic the Gathering? Do you know what Magic the Gathering is? It's a fantasy card game, okay? It's in the world of fantasy. There's dragons in there, man. When's the last time you saw a dragon in person, okay? When's the last time you saw a dragon from history? Never? Well, shut up. Like, this is a fantasy card game. It could be whatever it wants. It doesn't have to be an exact direct depiction of the Viking era. Seriously, okay? I think it's cool. I didn't even know that was Kaya. So when I, when I learned about that, I was kind of blown away. I'm very, very excited to see what new Planeswalker she gets. But I had to address that. Moving along. Our next Planeswalker is Nico Arias. He's a new Planeswalker from Theros. Um, Nico was destined to become a great athlete and undefeated javelinier who never miss a shot. They trained for many years, but Nico questioned their destiny. Nico wanted to become a true hero, someone who would help others when Nico, is it Nico? I had one of those remote control cars. Uh, lost a competition on purpose. A new path appeared, one where they'd be a true hero. 
So we're gonna learn all about uh, this champ. This, this this person looks weak though. <laughs> they look brittle. Um, I I honestly I, I don't really I don't like I don't like the look of this planeswalker. <laughs> it's dope. Um, but hey, to each his own. I just I don't know. It's like missing something to me. Uh, something's lacking there. But I like the shard, like the, the glass shard or whatever that um, this, this character is holding. I think that's pretty cool. All right, uh, moving along. Tybalt is back. That's right. We're getting spoilers in one second here. Tybalt is back, though. He's only appeared on th uh, three cards, really. Um, he's only had two cards, technically. Um, and that would be uh, the Fiend Blooded, which uh, goes down in history as uh, the worst Planeswalker ever. I mean, his abilities are just trash. You know, two drop, plus one draw a card, then discard a card at random. At random. At random. That is terrible. I'm not even going to read the rest of his crap. It's just terrible. Moving forward. Then we have Tabal uh, Rakish Instigator, which did see some play. This was, this was honestly an upgrade to his first Planeswalker. Okay? His, a shot kills the freaking first one. It's just garbage, man. So this was an upgrade uh, to that. Not even an upgrade. It was just a better Tibble altogether. And then you have Tibble to Rager. I made a billion puns on this one. Um, which is, uh, it's just, it is what it is. Okay. Um, Tibalt basically, you know, his name appears in the text there. So I had to throw it in there, but these are the three Tibalts. Okay. Or two Tibalts really. I bet you a billion, billion promo, uh, Zendikar rising booster packs that we are going to see a sick, and I mean sick Tibalt in this Caldime set. Bet you any billions of dollars, man. It is, he's going to be powerful. Probably the most probably the most valuable Planeswalker in the entire set. Why? Because Wizards did him wrong. And you know you did him wrong, Wizards. You did him wrong. So maybe they'll own up to it. Uh, moving along. <laughs> and if they do, you'll know because uh, it'll be a really good uh, Planeswalker. These are all uh, the new lands. We've already seen some from Zendikar Rising. Uh, that is correct. And uh, there's more. They're uh, finishing off the list here. So this is the new extended art on these. Very, very, very neat. Very cool art on these cards. I am definitely excited to play with them. Moving along here. We have the regular version of these cards. Um, not extended art foils. So pretty cool. Uh, favorite one? I don't know. But th these two kind of look really similar right here. Like, uh, I don't know. I guess if they're the same card, that's okay. We'll let that one slide, Watsy. That's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, really cool art. Look, a pirate ship. That's cool. Does it? Does a land come with the pirate ship? I don't know. This one's sweet. All these caves and stuff. Maybe some stalactites, stalagmites. No? Am I looking at that art all wrong? Who knows? Oh, there they are. There's stalagmites, stalactites. Okay. I've been in caves before. I know. I've tasted one. It's weird. All right, moving along. We have Prayer of Heroes, Deuce Dropper, Fun One, Artifact, Rare... For deuce, sacrifice, you gotta tap it. Sacrifice a creature. Remember, you don't sacrifice heroes here. Sacrifice a creature, search your library for a creature card that shares a creature type with a sacrificed creature and has converted mana cost equal to one plus that creature's converted mana cost. I feel we've seen this a billion times over. You know, we really have. Plus, uh, maybe like three times over. Put that, uh, plus that creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield that shuffle your library. Activate this ability only anytime you could see, or anytime you could cast a sorcery. Uh, that is one of the downsides, only when you can cast a sorcery. So there's a little limited there. But um, I think this is magnificent. I really do. It's a, it's a sweet card. You're going to be able to tutor up some bigger stuff. You're going to make some sick combos out of this thing. You don't sacrifice it whatsoever. You can just keep on doing it. You just got to sacrifice some other crap. It doesn't say you got to search. Um, it doesn't say you sacrifice a non-token creature, which is even cooler. But it has to share a creature card type. So, I mean, you're, you're getting rid of this for this. You know, like you're going from here to here, you know. Um, I think it's going to be really cool. A lot of triggers are going to be jumping off the board with this card. Brilliant, brilliant. It's an artifact. It's only two drop. Perfect. Moving forward. Showdown of the Skulls. I don't know why I wanted to say Showdown of the Apollo. I don't know. Uh, four drop. Um, this is cool. Sagas are back. That's right. Get excited. Get excited. Exile the top four cards of your library until end of your next turn. You may. You may. You may play those cards. That ability right there in itself is, is pretty cool. Because you're basically just getting... Uh, you're adding almost like you're adding four cards to your hand, basically. It's kind of, you know what I'm saying? But there's keywords in this. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. It doesn't say cast, so that means lands as well. So that's pretty legit. 
Cards like this that have that kind of ability have been banned <laughs> from standard because they're too strong, okay? Uh, take that one Gruel card, for example. Banned. We'll see ya, you know? Go and exile a bunch of cards, get you to play them until the next turn. You know, that was a five drop. This is a four drop. And it's doing something similar, you know? Not, you know, little, little, some differences, of course. Um, and it's only to the next turn. End of your, um, until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. Pretty, that's good, man. And then for back-to-back -back hitters, the next two turns following, whenever you cast a spell this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. So if you have cards that just double triggers on the plus one, plus one counters, which there's quite a few of them in standard right now, this thing's going to be berserk, you know, every time for the next two turns. Boop, 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 just keep stacking them up really quick, you know, which I think is really, really neat. Um, not only that, but you're going to do it twice. You're going to do it two times, you know. Um, that, that effect will be in the game, you know, or, you know, stuff. I'm talking too much. Shut up. But I think it's a cool card. So moving along, that's, that's going to be a lot of fun. I think that might be too much fun. That might be too much fun. But it's giving that color combination uh, a lot of advantage right now, uh, for sure. Here is uh, a Lathril Blade of the Elves, legendary creature, Elf Noble. It's got Menace. This is going to be uh, in the Commander uh, uh, deck from this set. And then whenever Blade of the Elves deals combat damage to a player, create that many 1-1 one, one Green Elf Warrior creature tokens Tap, tap 10 untapped, elves you control. Each opponent loses 10 life and you gain 10 life to 2, 3. What a wacky card. I think this is a good one, though. What's the, what's the cast in that? 4 converted? 4 converted cost? Dude, man, that, if you get 10 elves out. If you got 10 elves out, you should be able to win the game, though. Right? I mean, 10, 10 elves out, you should win the freaking game. It should be that simple. But I'm sure there's going to be some nice little combos that just boom, 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 you know, and you go to town. Uh, where's Crater Hoof? You know, you got 10, just put Crater Hoof down. What is going on here? Um, this card's pretty cool, though. Um, I like it. I like it. Uh, you get to gain a bunch of life, and you drain someone life. Gain and drain. That's pretty legit. It's 10. 10. That's a big, that's pretty cool, man. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I dig it. I like elves. I'm just glad they're back, you know. Then we got Thradar, the ever watchful legendary creature. Spirit Warrior, Flying in Vigilance. The first card you exile each turn costs, we don't know. We can't really make it out. So, maybe some snow mana? We don't know what that symbol is. Maybe a new mechanic? Probably snow. Um, uh, time will tell. We'll see. Whenever you exile one or more cards from your hand, add or something permanent from the battlefield. Create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. It's hard to decipher all that text. That's the best you could do right there. So, um, whatever. This card seems like a lot of fun. Spirits are back. What's good? You know, <laughs> Something else I wanted to point out. Oh, I don't think they talked about... Um, but there was a, a, a mention Wizards did make where they understand how terrible some mechanics, past mechanics have been in standard um, and how they're you know, in standard right now even, party mechanic being one of them. So if Joy Moss was a betting person, um, you bet your butt, we're going to see... We're going to see um, Wizards, we're going to see Warriors, you know, and Clerics. Rogues? Probably not going to get any help, okay? There are already top-tier decks in standard. So you might get some rogues, but they're not going to be that great. We got a lot of nice rogues the last few sets. We don't need any more. So I don't, it's may, it'll maybe make up 5%. They might make a couple rogues. You know, they're going to be just, eh, whatever. But the big ones um, are going to be the others as mentioned. So look out for that. That's coming, I'm telling you. Here is some packaging. We still got more to talk about. We still got to talk about Oko Broco, man. Uh, called them Collector Boosters right here. Uh, that's the packaging on it. Uh, the art, I don't know. That one's different. It's got more like that uh, throwback comic book style look to it. That's cool. I dig it. Got to be 13 year older. Don't forget. Uh, then we have uh, the booster draft box right here. Legit, legit. Followed by the set draft or the set draft. Yeah, booster set draft. Whatever. It's a set stuff, you know. And um, my question is, I think, aren't they just including from the list? They're putting those cards in these as well, if I'm not mistaken. Honestly, guys, I, we were all excited for this, this whole set thing, you know, the list cards. I don't think it's that great. Um, I think a lot of people agree with me. <laughs> um, it's just not that great. I don't even know if this is going to be a, a long uh, standing product. I just don't know. I, I don't know. And are, are you going to get um, an expedition in these? Does that happen? Because didn't we get those in the set draft boosters 
from Zendikar Rising. So what are they going to put in here? Are they just going to... Maybe this set as a whole is better because there's no lottery cards in it, you know, value-wise. So they have to make up for that value with better cards. It's probably going to be a set to keep your eye on. Speaking of which, I just bought a booster box of... What was it? I can't, a Cold Snap. Yay. Maybe I should open it. I don't know. But one day. I don't know. Probably a stupid idea because I would get not get my value back. But I only bought it because um, I knew we were going to get some cold sets coming out. So pretty legit. Thought I'd mention it because I'm excited. Sorry. Okay. Magic the Gathering Kaldime. This is the uh, bundle art right there. Cool, cool. Possible leak. This was old. This came from like a month or two ago. Now, obviously, this is a custom created card. But um, someone said this is what we're going to see in the upcoming Kaldim. So the artwork, yeah, it's from another planes, but it's from another uh, card, yada, yada, yada. So what is this? <laughs> Let's just read what it does, okay? Legendary Planeswalker Oko, plus one, create a 3-3 three, three green elf snow creature token. Sure. For its minus two, scry X, where X is the number of snow permanents you control. Draw a card, that's pretty good. Minus seven, gain control of up to X target non-land permanents, where X is the, uh, I'm sorry, where X is... Where X is the of snow permanence? What? What? Where X is the of? <laughs> you control. Uh, each of those permanents that are creatures gains haste. Okay, I understand what they're trying to say there. This is not a thing, okay? And if it is a thing, it's not coming out in Kaldim. All right, I'll tell you that right now. Kaldim! Um, it's not coming out in Kaldai, for sure. We already know the four Planeswalkers. We're not including anyone else. Oko is not going to be in the set, okay? This um, this is just silliness. I think this is just whoever made up. Maybe Card Trader made this up, you know, and they're like, ah, let's do this, you know, um, just to get a bunch of attention, you know, to their, to their website or whatever. It could have been that, or they could have just used this, you know, to talk about because it's a hype piece. Uh, either way, cool, cool. I used it for a hype piece in my video. There you go. But um, I thought it was interesting and I wanted to share it with you guys. So they say official release February 2021. Is that true? Yes. Uh, early spoilers, December 15th through the 17th. Spoilers do start January 7th. Spoilers finish January 22nd. Arena release date, January 28th. Pre-release date, January 29th through February 4th. Release date, February 5th. There's a set symbol. That's the whole kit and caboodle, man. What do you think? Oko, oh, you just sound broke, man. <laughs> yeah, if, ugh, everyone's sick of Coco, man. I love Oko. Bring more Okos back. I want to see a bunch of Okos, a bunch of Elks going at it. Go, bah, 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 okay, we have fun. All right, I'm Joey Moss with a lot of energy today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm feeling fantastic. And uh, I just wanted to give a, a shout out um, to, uh, to my lady, Sabrina. She's um she's in the hospital right now and um I mean you guys know we've gone through a lot together. We we've gone through a lot. Um a lot of back and forth between us, an emotional roller coaster kind of thing, you know, but she has a very very huge heart and she she does mean an absolute lot to me. Um she's going through some uh, some struggles right now. Um things are not looking too good. I'm not talking, you know, uh something mild here, you know, it's, it's, I don't want to get into too much more detail, but I just want you guys to keep her in your thoughts and prayers. Um, she, she needs them right now. So keep her in your mind, keep her, keep in your thoughts, guys. Sabrina, love your girl. Ah, oof. Be seeing you soon. Oh man. All right, guys. Uh, let's do this, Bruce. We're out of here. Skadoosh.